Here on Chalk Talk, we have talked a lot over the years about designing electronic systems for rugged environments. And an unsung hero of those kind of designs are the connectors. When robustness, high reliability, and durability are tantamount to a successful, long-lasting design. But there is one arena in rugged environments that we haven't talked about until now. Materials handling. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Materials handling is a growing market for electronic designs. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Jordan Groupie from Amphenol Industrial and I explore the variety of connectivity solutions that Amphenol Industrial offers for materials handling designs. We also examine the DIN charging solutions that Amphenol Industrial offers and the specific applications where these connectors can be a great fit. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Amphenol Industrial. Hi, Jordan. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, nice to meet you. So we're talking all about reliable connections for rugged handling today. But before we take a closer look at the solutions in this arena, can you give us an overview of the equipment and the users involved? Yeah, the equipment in the material handling market is going to be kind of focused on logistics and warehouse usage. This is pretty wide range of applications and different variations of things. They can be automated, they can be just moving pallets around just without any user input at all. That can also be where there's a driver involved. They get rather big rather quickly, but it's a, a definitely a growing market right now, especially whenever we start adding in all the warehouses that are popping up all around the world. So it's pretty consistent and it's been consistent even through the pandemic and there's you know, with a little dip throughout there, it's still continued coming back. So you have the, like the lift equipment and that's really the basis for material handling and then the moving of equipment. But another big component of material handling is gonna be the battery systems themselves. So we kind of focus on that at Amphenol and it's a market that is changing as we speak and has been changing here in the last, I would say, decade with, with some changes to lithium ion batteries and, and different ways to power your, your material handling equipment. But the end user of these will be your warehouse locations. Also retail and wholesale is used quite often and then on manufacturing floors to move stuff around. So it's an interesting market to go into and something that is very good for Ampel. Excellent. Now, what kind of market considerations should we think about when it comes to these kind of connectors? The connectors that we'll be talking about today, a lot of them are going to be focused on the electrification of the material handling equipment. The market that they go into, it's pretty wide ranging. Like we could talk about a lot of different markets outside of just material handling, we do heavy equipment in general, we could do energy storage. We could do a lot of almost EV type of applications. And these markets, they change quite a bit, but the forklift manufacturers, they are continuing with their like man trucks, as I had mentioned. But the biggest push lately, and this is with every manufacturer that's out there, they are working on the autonomous versions. I would say every manufacturer out there now has a version that they're working on or already in production with. And that there's a wide range across the globe. For forklift in general, it's even bigger in Asia than it is in North America, but it's definitely a, a big market in the U.S. too. There's markets that forklifts kind of go into that are a little like kind of, let's call it off the normal path, which is going to be the construction industry. That's going to be another one that uses a lot of material handling products a little bit differently than forklifts as you're used to. But even with those, we have a lot of different ways to power these. In the past, it's been some internal combustion engines, and some lead acid battery versions. And the lead acid battery is not going anywhere, it's still needed. You always hear about the lithium ion push, and it is a thing. But with the counterweight and the way that this is being used in forklifts, which is to enable to lift heavy objects, you have a counterweight so that you can distribute the weight evenly so you can lift everything safely. 
they still use lead acid. So it's going to be something that's going to be continual and it's going to be like a slow ramp up into thium ion. I don't think it's really going to be going away anytime soon as they have their own uh, lithium ion versions coming in. The battery manufacturers themselves are doing those as separate lines and getting into the lithium ion technology as we speak. As with all uh, automotive, EV, and heavy equipment, all those markets are also going into lithium ion, but all at different speeds. So keeping all of that in mind, what kind of solutions does Amphenol Industrial offer to help solve these issues? The way that we have everything kind of focused right now is we have a rad sock pin and socket, and it's been around for quite a while now. We've had a couple of variations of it. The power contact, it's a market leader in trail handling and a lot of other markets. Basically, we're able to give higher opacity within a smaller contact area. And this is at the base of any connection that we use. We have this rad sock. It's extremely high reliability. We have current ratings that on this contact that can go from below 35 amps all the way up to above 1,000 amps. One of the newer things that we're using it for is for like charging. And it has mating cycles that we've seen go up to above 200,000 cycles in test environments. Another key player to this being used in a charging environment is a low mating. So it's easier to mate and unmate. It has extremely high durability, especially for all the markets that it's used in. And for power contacts, it has a very low T-rise. And that goes with that to higher opacity, like I mentioned earlier. I mean, we're able to keep the temperature down of the connector so that you can still operate safely. I mean, whenever it has the mating style of this, it's just a twisted grid. It's self-cleaning. So whenever you do mate and you unmate, it actually kind of cleans that contact itself. Slightly lube from the factory, which helps keep this clean. And with any contact, it has a very low contact resistance. And that's kind of the main purpose for these. That's the contact itself that goes into our main products here, which I'll get into. We have product lines. The first one we'll talk about is the Sherlock Plus. Sherlock Plus is probably our biggest rad sock based connector that we have at Amphenol Industrial. And we have versions that are 1,000 volt rated. We have versions that are 1,500 volts rated. And the operating temperature range limit that we have, it'll go from negative 40C all the way up to a 125C on most versions. And then we have a 140C version also. We have EMI shielding as an option and HVIL as an option in a couple of these. Not on every one of them, but it's very easy to install and you could basically call this field installable if you wanted to. It has a very nice latching mechanism, and that's probably the biggest selling point whenever you start touching these and using them in your application is you have this positive mate that has this clicking sound whenever it's mated. It's a IP67 and IP69K when mated. We even have the versions that are going to be your IP67 when unmated. I know that's starting to be a requirement in different applications. It's going to be a, a nylon housing very cost effective, and especially for what we're able to offer for current ranges. With the RADSOC contact, we're able to cover in this product line down below 35 amps all the way up to 500 amps. We just go up in cable size, and that's the key to keeping that temperature rise down is putting the right Sherlock Plus connector with the right cable size and then make sure everything has a safe operating temperature. This is a UL1977 labeled connector. It's been a big focus for us for this product line. Uh, we have this available in multiple colors and keyways, very uh, user-friendly, very cost-effective, and also very durable. Gone up to US car V2 vibration testing, and that's kind of where we get all of our connectors up to whenever we start some vibration testing. And Sherlock Plus is available in just a single pole connector, so that's probably the biggest differentiation between that and other products that we have. It's only available in single pole, and, and usually it's just right angle. We have some straight options too, but right angle is where a lot of the designs went into. We also have a two-pole and three-pole version connector. Call this the UPC series. It's a universal power connector. They're, all of these are going to be shielded and have HVIL, and we're going to cover ranges of cable in this from 35 millimeter squared we can even take a 25 millimeter squared cable too if you need to, all the way up to 150 millimeter squared. We have three different body sizes that we can fit this in. 
And the first one we came out with was a 9.1 millimeter. We call it by sizes, like in millimeter sizes, and this goes with the Sherlock Plus 2. It's all based off of the Radsock contact. It's a 9.1 millimeter pin, which Radsock mates to. We also have a 12 millimeter version and a 14 millimeter version. And as you go up in size, go up in current rating. So we call it around 200 amps for your 9.1 millimeter whenever you use 50 millimeter square cable. The 12 millimeters, our newest product line addition, which is going to be a metal housing. That's the first time we've done this. It keeps the shielding going through the connector body rather than going through the added shielding inside of the plastic housing. It has a little bit of size savings. It's able also to work as a little bit of a heat sink whenever it's terminated to your housing. That 12 millimeter size is able to take 70 and 95 millimeter squared cable. And then we have a 14 millimeter version that is in two pole right angle. That's the only size we've made in it right now that takes that cable size above 95 at 120 and 150 millimeter squared. So around 490 amps, say it's a little bit below 500 with the 55 degree temperature rise. Thousand volt rated. These are again with our Radsock contacts, and two and three pole options, IP67, IP69K, both of those. They also include a CPA as a connector position assurance that is required in a lot of EV and automotive applications. That's one of the newer additions to our, our products lines as that 12 millimeter and that's been pretty popular here lately. Again, we have different variations of this and they all come with that lever lock that helps with the mating force. Smaller than the UPC, we separate this into a different product line. We have the ePower Lite product line. We have the two, three, and four pole versions that use a 3.6 millimeter contact. That is going to be, it's going to top out 70 amps pole. So that's one we have in the three different variations. And that's going to be able to take up to 10 millimeter squared cable. That's been around for a little while now that has shielding and HVIL. And with our Radsock contacts, that's the 3.6 millimeter as you listen through a bunch of these different names of connector lines, the previous UPC was 9.1, 12, and 14. These are the smaller ones, which are going to be 2.4 millimeter, 3.6, and then we get up to a 5.7 millimeter contact size. It can use cable size down from 2.5 millimeter squared, and then we have the 5.7 millimeter size that can use up to 25 millimeter squared cable, and that's going to be around 120 amps. That's at a 30 degree T-rise. These are meant to be around 100 mating cycles, plastic lever handle, so they do have assist whenever mating that helps with a lot of the mating force that you have between contacts. We have low mating force with the Radsock contact, but it's still needed whenever you start adding holes together. And this product line, just like the other ones, are going to be IP67 and IP69K. These are going to be pretty popular, kind of an accessory hour situations and have been around for a little while now. Excellent. Now, do you guys have any power-to-board solutions as well? We do. We have extremely popular in the power-to-board product line. We have a whole team that's dedicated just to power-to-board. Three of our biggest ones that we would use for power-to-board is going to be your RadCert. And you can have these that are going to be soldered to board. They can be press fit into your bus bar, or you can also have these as compliant pin, which are going to be more around our power block design, and then also like a press fit. Different ways that you want to terminate this, we call them different product lines, but it's all a power to board solution. The power block itself, as you can imagine, is going to be a compliant pin that'll be pressed into the board, so there's no soldering involved. So it's a pretty easy mating solution. Again, all these are really customizable. We can make these fit whatever kind of orientation you need. We can run down to basically almost signal connectors from these because it helps with that mating on board. We have several of them out there that are 14 millimeter contacts. So we're talking 500 amps almost through the board and or through a uh, bus bar. I think that's becoming more popular here as bus bars are gaining popularity more and more with the space savings and getting everything that Another one that we have is called the PGY. Again, it's just another way to get our RADSOC contact to the board. All of these are Rojas compliant and whatever style that's needed to get power to your board, 
that's going to be compliant pin or if it's going to be a solder to your board or if you're going to have holes through that we can press EGY into. This will help with any type of application you need for power to board. We have a lot of different ways to mate this too. It's pretty interesting for different applications to power to board. So I know that from previous Chalk Talks that DIN charging solutions can have some great benefits in this arena as well. So do you guys offer anything for DIN charging? We do. We've partnered with the Extron for the Extron charging connector. This is a very nicely made and also low mating force connector. And that's kind of the big selling point for this against its competitors is that you can mate this very easily. It has a nice latch mechanism that allows it to unmate easily rather than kind of straining your back whenever you're pulling these apart or hitting your knuckles together whenever you're pulling these apart without that nice opening latch mechanism. Whenever we get these in customers' hands, that's the stuff that they immediately notice. One of the big selling points to this is that the contact itself, it's going to be a, a contact that's going to be a low mating force contact. So whenever you're able to pull that apart, it unmates very easily. Our competitors in this area, they have to rely on their contact on keeping the connector together. The e connector only relies on the handle itself. It has several different ranges of this. We have 160 amp version with one aught cable. We have 320 amp version and a 430 amp version. And the 320 amp and 430 amp version are in the same package size. It's just determined on the contact itself that we use inside the housing. And then it goes up to four aught cable. So it's a very simple connection, very safe connection. And the nicest thing about this is that mating and unmating force, we're seeing about an 80% less mating and unmating force compared to the competitors due to this relying on the handle itself to hold everything together rather than relying on the contacts themselves. The handle itself is lifetime guaranteed and the housing is a polyamide acid proof housing and this silver plated tech. So that contact system is something we're very used to in that design is very appealing for end users whenever they're going to look at a, a charging connector. Great. Now, what specific applications are we looking at for these kind of connectors? Yeah, so we have the charging side from the Extron DIN charging connector, and that's going to be a pretty simple one that everyone that's familiar with this area would be just drop-in replacement, be able to make a safety improvement and even a package size improvement for the 430 amp version. That's going to be your charging from either the connection directly to your battery pack or the one connected to your forklift. Or you can also use that connection from the charger itself. So there's going to be the three different areas there that can use this connector, you know, depending on which male or female side. That's probably going to be the, the biggest area for that type of charging. We have the electrification side, which is probably the biggest area. We have different ways to do that with the UPC, the, the ePower Lite, or the Sherlock Plus to work on your any electrification needs. They have different versions that also with the Sherlock Plus where you can actually pass through the pin on the receptacle side. It goes directly through your housing and it can drop right into your PCB. So it's one step that you can get rid of by just using a double-ended pin on a receptacle and it'll drop right into either a PGY or rad cert or whatever rad sock power to board solution you guys want to use. That would be a really nice feel for this and a kind of a simple solution to get power from board. Another way for material handling that we've seen requests from is to improve manufacturability. I and mean, with the Sherlock Plus, it's a very simple connector. So it can be replacing battery lugs. And with replacing battery lugs, you have the torque specs that are required whenever you have to get these on safely on the manufacturing floor. Well, instead of that, you get to back away from that a little bit, just have a plug mated to its receptacle. It's just a plastic housing. And you get that sounding clip of when the plug mates to the receptacle and it's nice and clean and you get to avoid another torque spec on that manufacturing floor. There's a lot of distribution modules that we're seeing that are on the high voltage side of things during electrification, different junction boxes, onboard chargers, a lot of accessory drive units that are needed 
even the traction motors themselves, they need connections. We're seeing where our connectors have been used and sought after for their performance and our ability to work with uh, custom solutions, like I mentioned, for that pass-through uh, power to your PCB that we've done on the Sherlock Plus and use that on ePower Lite and have that ability to do that on other connectors too. So can you talk a bit about the whole material handling ecosystem here? Yeah. So on the forklift themselves, we have the charging area that is going to be probably one of our easier things to focus on. Everything that is going to be electrified has to somehow charge. So it can either be in a robot version itself that can have a docking charger, which we love to get some rad socks into that kind of charging area with even a magnetic charging port also have the Ekstron connector for charging on forklifts and a lot of the other material handling equipment. That's one of the bigger areas whenever that connection happens. And obviously that goes to your batteries themselves. The way that batteries are being put together now and lithium ion batteries, we have a lot of amphenol input that we can offer to this. And one of the nicer, cleaner ways based on the, what we've been talking about this, Sherlock Plus is a nice connection battery to battery cell. A lot of the inside the cab assemblies that are needed, that's another area that we can help out with, that that's going to be signal assemblies or the high voltage assemblies. That's another nice area with assemblies or just a signal. And we also have ability to do flex circuits whenever we have like these moving parts, flex circuits help out a lot, gets away from that mess if you have some routings that are quite difficult. Those flex circuits can also be used inside the battery itself, especially with the Bimion push that's become a very hot topic here. With Amphenol, we are high vibration. We are harsh environment. That's kind of our focus. We don't want to put products out there that are just meant to fall apart whenever they're used once or twice, and then you have to come buy a new one. We have really good products and we have really good contacts like that Radsock contact that can withstand this harsh environment. Our expertise in the connector world We've been around long enough and had a lot of design input for a very long period of time. And over that time, we've cut down on cost. We've brought that savings back to the customer and we've made quality improvements over time as we see issues come. Because as this electrification push has happened in the last decade plus, it's really only been hitting even less than a decade, really, where the push has really been coming from. As involved in it with the customer from day one, we've been able to identify these quality improvements that we can make with our customers helping us out and us helping them out. Excellent. So what kind of support does Amphenol Industrial offer if my audience needs a bit more help? Yep. So Amphenol Industrial, we're based out of Indicott, New York. That's our headquarters now. We've moved that headquarters from Sydney, New York a couple of years ago. So we have a factory there that focuses on assembly. We have our management team that sits there. We have engineering that sits in Indicott. And most of our product management team is there. A lot of focus in this area for Indicott was key to the customer location. So that's why we're staying in that area. We're very familiar with our local customers. We have two China locations. One of them is very large, uh, Zhuhai, China. That is a lot of our R&D. We have customer service there, assembly, warehouse. A lot of that design and engineering also sits there too. In Shenzhen, China, we have injection molding, stamping. We have also a lot of PDU expertise that comes from Shenzhen that we're also able to bring in and, and into the U.S. or bring in China. We have a test lab, an R&D area in Clinton Township, Michigan, where uh, we do a lot of our RADSOC testing. We have some engineering there, obviously, that works in that R&D area. Nogales, Mexico is another big location for us for assembly. We have a warehouse location across the border in Arizona that helps us get things in and out into the U.S. and into Mexico. Uh, our customer service sits there. Great team down there that supports everybody. It's kind of nice location for us to have a big Amphenol footprint in Nogales couple of new locations, actually, that we've been adding to. Pesh Hungary is pretty recent. We've had that for a little over a year now, and we're doing cable assembly, and we have some PDU builds at the warehouse that's going in. Awesome. Well, Jordan, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Yes, thank you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Amphenol Industrial. 
for Chalk Talks. I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.